Oh, that lovely feeling before a trip. Luggage is packed, the route is planned, this vacation should be unforgettable. Just need to check the life hacks and tricks list for travelers. Don't you have one? It's okay, I'm ready to share it with you. You can tie your belt, scarf, or a blanket under the folding table and make a small hammock for your legs. This will help you better relax during the flight. You can buy special inflatable mattresses that can be used as a real bed for a child. This will help you out perfectly if your baby doesn't like flights or cries a lot. Don't bring coffee on board. At high altitudes, air humidity is similar to that of a desert on a hot day. The body dehydrates quickly under such conditions, and coffee enhances this process. Better buy a bottle of pure water at the airport when you've gone through passport control or on board the plane. Just stick to bottled water, though, because the water they pour into tea, for example, might not be very clean. It's also recommended to eat something salty before the flight. Crackers or chips are great. Salt traps fluids inside your body, and this is exactly what it needs when you are somewhere really dry, like an airplane. Don't like the food you get on the plane? Some airlines provide a special menu for passengers. You just need to ask for it. As a rule, it is tastier than regular airplane meals. The thing is, the food is really quite ordinary. It's low pressure and dry air at a great height that mess things up. Our taste buds are dull, and any food seems bland. Essential oils will help you get rid of nausea or feeling sick. Take a vial of peppermint oil on board with you and breathe it every time you feel unwell. If the airline prohibits taking even small amounts of liquid, then drip the oil on a handkerchief. Also, if you're planning a short trip and the airline doesn't let you take perfume on board, you can soak a tissue with it and put it in your inner pocket. The longer the perfume stays in contact with the fabric, the better the tissue will convey the aroma. If you have a hard time changing time zones and can't fall asleep after the flight, you should arrange a workout for yourself shortly before departure. Go to the gym or run a mini-marathon. This will help you fall asleep faster after the flight. It's not necessary to cover the suitcase with a protective film if you want to waterproof it. Take an ordinary candle and rub it on your bag. Wax repels dirt and moisture. You can also protect the luggage if you put a t-shirt on it. The handle should stick through the collar. Don't forget to make an incision on the t-shirt for the side handle of the suitcase. Many airlines provide their passengers with lots of freebies. To find out what they are and get them, just ask. Children's pencils, wet wipes, puzzles, toys, snacks, and juices. Each airline has its own assortment. Baggage loss is rare, but it does happen. If you want to make finding it easier, take a picture of your bag before the flight and show the photo to the airline employees. There is a more efficient but expensive way, though. You can buy a special GPS tracker, put it in the suitcase, and it's going to work up to 6 days. Use your phone to locate your luggage wherever it is. Before leaving to another country, write down the consulate phone number and the number and address of your hotel on a piece of paper. Various things might happen on the trip, and all your phones might be unavailable. Keep this paper with you at all times, and put it in a plastic cover for protection. If you love beautiful places, and who doesn't, but don't care for hordes of tourists, and who does, then better stop looking on popular travel services. Take your time and use walking routes in your phone's Maps app. You'll surely find a stunning landscape that the rest of the tourists don't know about. When you fly in transit through another country, you may stay there from a few hours to three days as a layover. For example, if you fly to Thailand through Sri Lanka, you can stay in Colombo for a couple of days. Why not use it to your advantage? But the coolest thing is that such stops don't affect the cost of the ticket. You can find information about possible layovers in the tariff section. Also, it's best to inform the airline in advance that you want to stay in the country of transit. The airline can get you a visa for this country, bus transfer, and a hotel. Buy a tourist card in the country of arrival. These cards will help you save a lot of money on public transit, museums, and tourist attractions. If you really love freebies, who doesn't? Get prepared by finding out in advance what places you can visit in a foreign country for free. Also, there are days of free visiting at all the museums of the world.
you can save up to 10% of the cost of any ticket by purchasing it online. And it's also much quicker, saving you the time you would have otherwise spent in line. Upload scans of all your documents to the cloud storage. This will help you out big time if you lose both your passport and your phone. Locals in some foreign countries might see you as a rich tourist. People of all sorts will insistently ask you to buy something from them. Learn the phrase, I'm here for work, in the language of that country, and everyone will leave you alone. If you're going to rent a car, you need to inspect it and take photos of all the scratches and dents. Best do this in the presence of the car's owner, so there isn't any misunderstanding later. If you're more into buying your own food in a supermarket, it's better to do it two hours before closing time. In the US, Thailand, Hong Kong, and other countries, prices of perishable goods are up to 50% lower at this time. They're not bad or anything. Shops will have to dispose of them after closing anyway, so they try to sell as much as possible. The internet abroad is really expensive, and spending loads of money just on maps is frustrating. Luckily, there are offline maps too. Just upload the maps of the city of your destination in advance. All cafes, museums, reviews, and ratings will be available to you in offline mode. If you check into a hostel and want some privacy, choose a 6-bedroom. The 10-bedroom might be cheaper, but you'll probably get to spend the night alone. Those who want to save money pay for a 10-seater, and a 6-seater is an intermediate option, which is rarely chosen. You can get a new charger at your hotel for free if you forgot or lost yours. Just tell the front desk clerk about your problem. People often forget their cables and charging devices in hotels, and hotel employees put them all in one big box.